jackal adopted by lions. Once upon a time, there was a pair of lions with two female cubs. This family was starving because their habitat was bereft of prey. One day the father, after a long hunt through a huge expanse of his territory, found only an abandoned, whimpering jackal cub. He couldn't bring himself to kill the youngster, so he picked him up by the scruff of his neck and took him back to his wife. He set the ragamuffin down before her, saying, A thoroughly rotten day, my darling. Rotten. Total waste of time. All I could find was this baby, which might serve as a tidbit to help you give better milk to the girls. Arnold, the lioness snarled, for that was indeed her husband's name. I can't do that. Kill an orphan? No, I'll raise him as their brother. He will be a member of the family. With that, the lioness began to suckle as best she could the poor jackal orphan, who was utterly famished. I was rather afraid of that, said Arnold, who well knew and admired her tender-heartedness. Another mouth to feed, he muttered, as he curled up for a nap, swishing his tail to keep the flies off his face. So it came about that a lioness adopted and raised a jackal baby alongside her two cubs. All three ate, slept, and played together, and sincerely believed they were siblings. The wise lion parents said nothing to upset this happy state. But to an outsider, it was obvious that there were differences. The lion cubs were a bit younger and stumbled a bit more when they walked, while the jackal, although physically smaller, moved in a sure-footed way and tended to boss his sisters around. One day, however, the three cubs strayed further from their den than ever before, and ran into a lone elephant who peered down at them balefully from a great height. Uh-oh, shouted the jackal cub, turning tail quickly. We've got to get out of here. This is terrible. We know elephants fight lions, and here's one right in our path. But his leonine sisters weren't listening and had inched ahead, growling deep down in their throats and staring right back at the elephant that towered over them. Sisters, sisters, yapped the jackal. Time to go home. This is going to end in tears. Let's go. Now, now. The jackal's anxiety was infectious, undermining the girl cub's instinctive bravery. In a flash, all three scooted back as fast as they could and told their mother the whole story several times in quick succession in breathless voices. But the lion cubs also teased their jackal brother, saying he had been a scaredy cat coward. Tommy Rock, the jackal snapped, for he was vain. It was my duty to protect you from your folly in trying to frighten an elephant. I was being prudent. I was not in the least afraid. If that's so, said one of the sisters, why did you run first and fastest, you little pipsqueak, snarled the jackal, rushing in and giving a painful nip to her back left leg. I'll teach you to mock me. Children, that's enough growled the lioness in a meaningful way. Stop this bickering instantly. Silence followed, like the aftermath of a thunderclap. The siblings knew very well not to mess with mother. They'd seen her kill their dinner enough times to know her power. In their eyes, a herd of elephants was significantly less formidable. You, the lioness said to the jackal, come with me. You too, she said to the cubs. Go and play together under those trees. She led the jackal cub over to a patch of marshy grass beside a pool of spring water and calmly stooped to take a drink. The jackal stood beside her and after a minute she said patiently, please never fight with your sisters in this way again. It will simply land you in trouble. But her plea only served to rile him again. Do you think I'm their inferior, he demanded of his foster parent? What right do they have to put me down? Am I not their equal in intelligence? 
beauty, skill, and courage? Yes, indeed you are, said the lioness patiently, for she truly loved him as one of her own. But you are lacking one key piece of information, which I now shall give you. Quietly, she explained to the young jackal how he had been a foundling, tenderly brought to her by her husband. She told of their decision to raise him as a lion, how she had suckled and fattened him from her own breast, and how proud she was of him. But the key piece of information is that you are and will always be a jackal, whereas your sisters will grow into lionesses. They will be bigger and fiercer than you and surely eventually kill you if you continue this habit of taunting them. By now, the young jackal had begun to quake in terror. His mouth dropped slowly open, for the sudden discovery of his true origins shocked him almost beyond bearing. If he wasn't a lion, who was he? So yes, his foster mother continued, you are indeed handsome, clever, brave, and brimming with heaps of other fine characteristics. But, my dear, you are not a lion. And for that reason, and for the sake of your own safety, I think you should now leave us and find your own kind to mingle with. Staying with us, I'm sorry to say, will lead to your certain destruction. I don't feel very well, Mum, whimpered the sad little jackal, beginning to snuffle and cry. Wisely, his surrogate mother allowed him time to flush out his sense of vulnerability. I know, my darling, she finally said most quietly. This is hard for you. She paused, then continued. You are very brave. That is the quality your father and I, as well as your sisters, have bestowed on you. The bravery of lions. Take that and you will become the best of jackals. But sadly, you can never be a lion, my son. Be brave. Goodbye, mum, and thanks, the youngster sniffled and gave the big cat a nuzzle of gratitude. Then he scampered off so quickly he raised a cloud of dust and was never seen again, and neither, as far as we are concerned, were the lions. Mm -hmm.